The Lord is the light of my faith. Salvation is not. Who can I feel? The Lord is the strength of my life. The moon shall I be afraid. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquiet within me? Hope in God. Why I shall yet praise him in the house of my contentment and my God. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the times of trouble. Therefore, Therefore, we would not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He dwells in the secret place of the Most High, so abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, the faith nor his will. His understanding is uncertain. His understanding is uncertain. He gives power to the weak and those who have no might. He increases strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear not. Why I am with you. Be this not dismayed, why I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not. The Lord is a good and stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. Blessed are those who mourn. They shall be comforted. You know, I am with you always, even in the end of the day. Jesus said to me, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may be died, he shall live. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Where my father's house are many men. When I saw him, next to his feet. Ladies and gentlemen, the ones that stand, I must see the guests that are in the front of the seat. If you don't have any seats, that means we are at the I can't put up a couple more chairs, so you can have to stand.
ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. But we had family members outside, so I'm going to ask that entire family. I know uh, y'all can come back and view after the service is over, but we had family saying that they need to get in to be on the day. So I'm going to ask that the entire family, please, at this time, we, I still see people standing, so at this time, if you don't mind, we just uh, excuse ourselves. And like I said, after the service, if you want to do a final viewing, you're more than welcome to come back. Thank you in advance. <laughs> a lot of you know me, some of you don't, but that's okay. Gilbert and I go back, I was nine years old when I met Gilbert, I'm a lot older than that now. Amen. And uh, he and my brother Larry, they were the best of friends and family. And I'm just little Paris hanging on behind. But I was honored uh, in the later years of his life to become his pastor and to, to think on him and to look with him and pray with him and to visit him in the hospital at home. He would come to church slow, but come. He would come and had the pleasure of marrying him and Jerry. And, you know, God is just so good that we have these, all these wonderful memories of one another together that we can give God glory for the life and for the fellowship that we've had with one another. And I'm just glad to be here to serve once more and again. Praise God. So I want to open up with prayer at this time. So you should guide that we are as we see God's favor and his grace at this time. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you first thanking you for our life and for our health and our strength, a reasonable portion that you've given us. And we thank you, Lord, for this fellowship of family and friends who have come together to honor and remember my brother, my friend, Gilbert. And the time that we've had together, the love that we've shared, the fun, the craziness, the serious times, Lord, that we've all gone through together, we thank you, Lord, that he's out of misery, out of pain now. Thank you, Lord. And that we look to you, God, for our comfort. Well, even in his pain, Lord, we're, just, we're hurting now. Oh, but you're so good to, to help us in our time of trouble. So we ask you, Lord, to let your grace come now. And fill us with your presence. And fill us with your spirit. And fill us with your comfort, Lord, even while we're hurting. Help us to focus our eyes on you in this time, in this moment. We thank you, Lord, because you are so faithful to help us if we just ask you. And Lord, I'm asking you for everybody. Oh God, help us all right now. Woo, in Jesus' name, give us strength to go forward and to go on and to do better as we go forward. To keep loving strong and hard. And to give your name glory with our lives. And I thank you for that, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everybody. Come on, let me hear you say amen. You know what, I couldn't hear you. All of us are going to be here sooner or later. We're either going to visit somebody or we're going to be being visited. Amen. But make sure that you, you, you've got a relationship with God. Make sure you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Make sure you have a relationship with one another. Amen. We, you, we don't want to be the only one at the place when our time comes. And it, it, it is evident that Gilbert was loved by so many because you're here today. Broke your schedules. And to show love to, to Gilbert and to the family. And we appreciate you, and we love you, and we are praying for you. And you can call me anytime. I'm not only his pastor. I'm as also his brother and friend. But I'll also be your pastor, like Rick will also. If you need a pastor, if you need a friend, if you need a minister, we're here for you as brothers, uh, as black people. Is that cool, too? A amen. As one, as one another, we can hold to each other and hold each other as family in this time and in this season. I'm going to read the Bible for you from the book of Psalms. It's the Old Testament reading. And then I'm going to read the New Testament reading for you. And I, I pray that the reading of this word will be a blessing in your hearing. Just listen real carefully what it says. 
Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Woo, hallelujah. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hope that blesses you. It sure blesses me. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. Even right now, he's still leading us through this valley of the shadow. Don't make me preach. I feel, I feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. He loves us. He loves you. He loves me. Oh, how he loves us. And you can look to him. He's a good shepherd. Amen, somebody. From John, 1 John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. I like this one, too. Actually, truth is, I like the whole Bible. Just bear with me. I'm, I guess that's a preacher thing, but it's all good. John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. Mm. Believe in, you believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus talking. He said, believe in me now. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. If you love Jesus, you're going to be with him. Hallelujah. And, and, where I, and where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how, are, how can we know the way? Well, Jesus said, I got the answer for that. I am the way. Whew. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me or through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And if I keep going, I'll read the Bible some more. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's gone to prepare a place. And Gilbert is occupying his house, right? Ooh, hallelujah. He's occupying his house right now. There's no tubes there and, and no pain and no suffering there. He's probably doing a jig and a dance while we're here, here kind of with tears in our eyes. But he's, he's, if, if he could come back, he wouldn't come back. And if you made him come back and pray and God gave us a miracle, he'd get mad at you and say, what you doing? Get me up. Leave me alone. I'm fine where I am. Praise God. He's, he's rejoicing and he's in peace. And he's, he's enjoying the blessing of our father. And, and, and he knew Jesus. And, and if you want to know Jesus, you can know him so that when your time comes, you can go to heaven with joy and peace, knowing that God, that you've got the kind of relationship with God that will make him happy and you happy. Isn't that a wonderful thing? praise God. So we thank God for the scripture reading today, for hearing the word of God, and I trust that the word resonating in your spirit will give you comfort and guidance and peace. Praise God. Well, now we have time for uh, remarks from some of you that are out there. Don't everybody come at one time. We're asking if you're going to have remarks. Two minutes. Two minutes. Amen. Is that what we like to say? Hit it, get it, quit it. Amen. And so if you're here today and you want to have words concerning my brother and my friend, amen, my older brother and friend, then I'm going to invite you to come at this time. Let's, and if I see you, you know, let's do it this way. Raise your hand if you like, and that way we don't have people lining up, and I can acknowledge you if you'd like to come have words at this time. Is there one, someone who's going to have words at this time? Come on, brother. Come on. God bless you. First, give an honor to God. He's first in my life. And to the family, friends, I wanted to say, <coughs> may the Lord give you all comfort in this time. 
um, sitting there wondering and pondering and listening and having instructions about speaking on someone that you love for two minutes. How do you sum up someone's life in two minutes? Um, it's a hard thing to do. Like Parrish, um, Gil and I, we were all down on 4th Street. Um, many of, of you that's here who was on 4th Street, uh, we all grew up together. Uh, we know all the craziness that went on and, and so forth. Um, I just, it's hard for me right now to envision my brother being gone. Um, when I first saw him when he was sick, it, it just broke my heart. I, I couldn't handle that. But knowing even now, um, there's a feeling of rejoice inside me knowing that he's no longer suffering. Because the word says to be absent from the body, to be present to the Lord. And if you sum up, you know, I've heard people talk about summing up someone's life and what, did the, what mark did they leave when they left. And Gil left a legacy. And, and, and his legacy, um, I would say, and this is just me. I just want y'all to know that. This is just me. Uh, the legacy that he left, he left three beautiful flowers <laughs> that any man, any woman could be proud of. Uh, their family is amazing. Uh, he left um, a wife who took care of him. And, 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 and family that was around him. But I always have to focus back on those three. Because Gil was generous. He was generous in a way that some people don't understand. And what I mean by that is this. He would give more to a stranger at times than he would do with his own family. And I can remember when I got home from the military and he was... Uh, at that time, had a y very young family, and he said, well, look, come on and stay with me. And that come on and stay with me for a short period ended up being years, <laughs> a lot of years. And um, he and I, um, we, we traveled together. Uh, we played ball together. Gil loved playing basketball. We traveled the city playing basketball. Um, Rick knows, uh, Rick thought he was Magic Johnson, <laughs> but he was more like Tragic Johnson. Um, I thought I was Mo Cheeks, but that wasn't happening. <laughs> but, uh, and Donnie, and, you know, all of, we traveled the city, we played, and we had fun. And, um, Gil was just, he was just different. I remember a time when we lived on 4th Street, um, it snowed. And one of the things we used to do, we used to go sledding. And we used to come down Caneville Street. Caneville Street was a, was a street that went, that, that went straight down. And, and the thing was, when you took the sled up and you came down, you had to make a hard left turn. Uh, that way you don't go into a parked car. Well, Gil and his infamous wisdom decided that he was going to strap the sled up to his dog, Boo, that was a St. Bernard. <laughs> so when he came down the hill, he was flying down the hill, and then he went to make that hard left-hand turn, but he didn't quite make the turn. Gil went right up under the parked car. Bam! And then when he came out, we like, Gil, you all right? And he looked at us, he said, man, that dog... <laughs> It, but it was just things he would do that would just make you laugh. Um, I'm going to miss him. Um, you know, the word says there's a time for everything. Um, 
Ecclesiastics 3 talks about those times. And, and those, um, I would suggest if you have a Bible, read that. Because there is a time for everything. Uh, there's a time for forgiveness. God says that we are to forgive, not just so much for the individual, but for ourselves. Because in forgiveness, there's strength and also in c there's comfort. And I choose to think about the good times. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to really miss him. Um, and if I can just use my imagination for a second, I believe that the father has brought him in. And if there's a basketball court up in heaven, I can hear Gil say, I got next. Well, Gil, you do have next. And we'll see you soon. God bless you, and God bless the family. to say good afternoon to everyone. My name is Sweetie. I was a very close friend of the family. We all family. I could definitely say Gil saved my sanity. And a lot of y'all probably was like, how? Why? I was going through changes in my life and I had young children. And Gil came to me just out the blue. He said, I don't care what you need, what you want. What you got to do, he said, I'm there for you. And you know, people just say that sometimes, and you don't really see it or understand it, but I took him through the test. I called on him one day, and he came through 100%. I can never forget that. I'm gonna miss him. My children gonna miss him. He had a good spirit. And when people have good spirits and good hearts, it lives on. I just want to tell everybody to take care and keep God as number one. Thank you to all the all the re remarks. Praise God. And June brought up some things, man. I'm like, oh, I didn't even remember Booth, man. Good Lord. We have so many great memories that go back over the years, especially in our younger days. We were a bunch of wild and crazy guys, but God saw us through. And God caught me first and, and, and saved me and, and, and put me in the church at a very early age so that I kind of got separated from the group in the early, at the early point. So there's, there's carry on that I don't even know about, <laughs> but the love is always there and has always been there. And I was so honored that he came to me and joined the church and had me mar do to perform the wedding. You know, Gil, in, in, in particularly in his, in his latter days, he was really working on making sure that everything was right because he had that kind of mindset to make sure that everything was taken care of, that everything would be like it should be because he knew he was leaving. It was just a question of time. Can I, I got some news for y'all. News flash, we are all leaving. Let's get ready. Live, live like we're going somewhere. Amen. Bless all those you can bless while you have a chance to bless them. Be as kind to people as long as much as you can, because our day is coming. Yeah. Amen. And the thing that makes us get through knowing that our day is coming, that we got each other's back. Can I, can I tell you, that's what church is all about? Folks, leave, folks go, go, go to church for all kinds of reasons, but the church is the family. It's the one place where you can meet the family every week. You can't go to the party all the time. So you don't work together all the time. But when we had church, when we had church family, church family brought us all the family and the kids together. And we raised our kids together. They saw aunt and uncle and buddy, and you didn't even know who was your uncle and who was your cousin and who was your friend. You didn't even know because when you have a close church family like that, it's all this support and all this love. And that's what church, that's part of the thing that church is about that we've forgotten. And I just wanted to share that with you. And that's why I was so glad when Gil came to me. I'm like, oh man, I get to see my brother again. Whew. Hallelujah. Great, great day. And he's been a great friend of mine. And uh, we, and as, as all of you know, we love one another. I'm going to read his life story in your hearing. I'm probably going to learn some things I didn't know. 
but it's all right. And you know, I was just looking at the at the uh, at the at the program. I don't see my picture. Now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna get over that. I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> Life story. Gilbert J. Lockhart was born March seventh, nineteen fifty four. Oh my God, he's that old. Okay, in Philadelphia, to the late Clancy May Lockhart, who we call Miss Clancy. Everybody, I'm not even gonna get into that, I'm sorry. Gilbert was blessed with having Edward J. Lockhart as a father in his life, uh, Bubba. Both mother and father preceded him in death. At a young age, Gilbert found and accepted God into his life and allowed his mighty strength to guide him until the end. Gilbert was educated in the Philadelphia School District where he graduated from Thomas Edison High School Later in life, he went to CLC and graduated with great pride. Gilbert met his wife, Geraldine, when they were children and remained close over the years until they married in 2016. I did the wedding, y'all, I'm just saying. Gilbert was a member of True Vine Baptist Church for a number of years as well as a mason until his health declined. He worked at Episcopal Hospital for more than 20 years in various positions. He was a hardworking man and adored his family. To know him was to love him. So many will miss his laughter and all the crazy things about him that were all unique. Before his health began to fail, Gil definitely loved having family gatherings, watching sports and shooting pool amongst many other things, but most of all, spending time with his wife and making her smile. And what a nice smile it is too, Jerry. Gilbert leaves to cherish and celebrate his memory and life, his loving wife, Geraldine, his three beautiful daughters, Danielle, Desiree, and Charisse, from his previous marriage, two grandchildren, Floyd and Destiny. Gilbert cherished his sister, Robin, me too, who preceded him in death. Miss her, don't y'all miss her? Amen. Niece, Chris Shaw, great niece, two great nieces, Brianna and Sharnice, a host of cousins, nieces, nephews, and friends, also his brothers and sisters in heart. So many names that could have been named on here, would have been named. Time, sometimes, and space doesn't allow it. So if your name wasn't on here, like mine, I'm just saying, um, it's okay, because the love is still there. The love is there. You know, sometimes, and the reason why I'm doing this comes sometimes, you know, folks going, they didn't say my name. It was in the heart. We are in each other's hearts. I've always know that. Praise God. Let me read to you the poem we have here. It says, I'm free. Don't grieve for me. For now, I'm free. I'm following the path God has laid for me. I took his hand when I heard his call, for the time has come for me to leave it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way, for I found peace at the end of the day. If, I'm, if my leaving has left a void, just think of the good times and be filled with joy. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I savored much. Good friends, good times, and a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and peace to thee. God wanted me now. He set me free. Amen. Well, let's give Gilbert a hand. Would you do that with me? Just give Gilbert a hand. He's a, a good man, a loving man, and my friend. Praise God. Amen. And I, I, know, I know he loved you. Amen. But God loved him better. He says, time for me to take my son home. He's been in enough pain long enough. I got you. And he took him home. And I'm thankful to God for his rest in him. You know, the last, the last day or two, he's like, I'm still here. I'm like, come on now. Come on, God. I'm still here. Let's go. <laughs> Praise God. It's a blessing to be able to say, God, I'm ready. And be glad about it. And so I rejoice with him for his victory, even though my heart is hurting for the loss of his presence. 
but I know. I know I'm going to see him again, and that gives me joy. So at this time, the, the, the eulogy is coming by our dear friend, Gil's good friend, Elder Richard. Oh, I'm sorry, before he comes, there's a tribute of compassion, almost over as if that is a tri tribute of compassion coming from our consultants who are coming at this time. God bless you guys. And amen again. God is still good, and his mercy is everlasting. Truth endures to all generation. To this bereaved family, first of all, from the Rick's funeral and cremation service, we would like to thank you for placing your trust in this during this hour of bereavement. And, uh, uh, you know, like I said, God is still good, even in a time like this. Realize that a challenge today faces us today as we try this race to run, sometimes tired, weary, and yet determined for God's work must be done. And some of us might wonder, what's left now? What will we do? But the Apostle Paul said, now nah, by the faith, hope, and love, love being the greatest. We have faith enough to believe that our dear brother is going on to be with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we hope that if our testimony remain true, that we will see, we, we will see him again one day. But we realize that love extends beyond the grave. We'll always have his memory, his life, and his legacy in our hearts. And sometimes we think that death defeated us, but death did, will not defeat us. Because death have been, we have defeated death through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And at this time, our uh, musician, she would uh, sing us something from her heart. And we hope that this would cherish you. You don't know my story. And all the things that I've been through And you can feel my pain What I had to go through to get here You'll never understand my praise Don't try to figure it out My worship is for real hey, because my worship, my worship is for real. Hey, you don't know my story and all the things that I.
Hallelujah. Thank you. My worship is free. Because my hallelujah. Yes, God. My worship is for real. Oh, oh, oh. Because my worship, my worship is for real. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He saved a wretch like me. He's worthy. God is worthy. He's worthy. Y'all just don't know my story. Y'all don't know my story. That's why I know he's worthy. He would take a wretch like me, bound in drugs and alcohol, Sex and everything I could think I could do would give. And God saw fit to save me. Bring me out that nastiness. Let me see the realities of life itself. I, I, I thought I knew, but I did not know who I was. And to tell the truth, some of y'all don't know who you are. You really don't know who you are. Because if you knew, then your worship would be for real. Woo. Father, I, I, I thank you as I stand here. Lord, uh, empty me out of anything that's not like you. Bind up confusion in the atmosphere. Bind up doubt. Bind up anything that's not like you in this place today, Father. Release joy, Father. Release peace. But most of all, your people need understanding. They don't even understand how they're being misled in the earth today. But I thank you, Lord. I thank you for what I've heard so far because from June and Sweetie and San Danielle and Gerald and others here, what you gave me to say, I know is for this time. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, changing my name from R and R, Rotten Rick, to a man named Brother Rick. Thank you so much. I hold the title of elder because someone saw fit to elevate me to that position. I didn't want any position or title, Lord. I was just grateful that you saved me. But because you saved me and I'm at this place, I want to bring you glory through your word. So fix every ear now, God, to hear. I ask you to fix every heart to receive. Give them eyes to see past the natural into the supernatural. Because, Lord, this journey that my brother took, all of us have to take. Don't think it's not coming your way. So, Lord, may the words that would come out of my mouth today and the meditation that would be in my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength. And you redeemed me. In Jesus' name, amen. When I met my brother some years ago, 
was playing basketball. I had just got out of the military and moved on Franklin Street. And I met Gil. I seen him going up to the court. And I said, them and gentlemen, what do dudes know about basketball? So I went up there and played ball with them. And that's how we got to hanging with each other. But as time went on, we got in uh, some lifestyles contrary to sledding, contrary to basketball. We got foolish, y'all. And I didn't know it at the time that that wasn't a way of life. I didn't know that. I thought that was life. So as uh, Gil had called me and talked to me, he said, man, I want you to do uh, my service. And I was like, oh, man. I, I didn't want to do it because of just, me, you know, our relationship. And let me tell you something. When a man like him struggles to get his life in order, you have to know God to see the struggle. You got to know God. And, and so I said, Lord, I said, yes. And, and then I said, Lord, now you have to give me what to say to the people. I've talked to Gil. See, when the Lord saved me, I, I ran back to all my friends and told them what God had did. God changed me. You know what I mean? I had to go into rehab first. I had to go into rehab because I was shooting dope, smoking dope. Drinking dope, whatever I could get into my body, I did it. I did it. I did it, y'all. So as I was away, I said, Lord, you got to show me another way of life. So he began to show me. And then when he began to show me, I ran back to tell my friends, man, we've been living wrong. We've been living wrong. We, we ain't been living the way God intended us to live. And man don't know that. And I, I didn't know I was living wrong until I started reading the Bible. And as I started reading the Bible in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he said, let us create man in our own image. So a man is created in the image of God. We go around calling ourselves men, but if you don't know God, you're missing something. See, a little later down in the scripture, another verse down, he says, but I'm going to make a definition of them. I'm going to make a male and a female. Amen? But the man, the man is created in the image of God. And I was not a man. I, I, I apologize to my wife when we got back together for not being who God had called me to be. I did not know, because I did not know that we were in a warfare in this earth. You, you know, everyone in this room has an opponent. And if most athletes, they have to train to be able to beat their opponent. See, our opponent is sitting around by you right now, and you can't even see him. You can't see him. But I, I guarantee right now, he is speaking in somebody's mind contrary to what I'm saying. That's how he works. He always comes with confusion. He always comes with doubt. That's him. And he He'll do that in people's lives for years. I was 40 years in drug and alcohol addiction. 40 years lost everything, homeless. Lost everything. And I worked in everything but all my money, all my time. We lost basketball. We lost swimming. We lost the natural, the, the, the simple things of life. We lost them because we didn't know our opponent. We didn't know our opponent started with us when we were little. Let me give you an illustration how he started with you. When you was a child, your mother took you to the corner of the block and taught you how to cross the street. Right? Most of us here, mothers taught them you don't cross on the green light. 
Wait till the light turn red. Or that's a stop sign. Look all around before you cross. But as we got older and we could go to school with our peers, somebody said, let's cross in the middle. We ain't go to the corner no more. That day, your opponent began to fight you. Your opponent came at you. Because the day you stop listening to the authority in your life, you become disobedient. And disobedient is a spirit. And it has to grow. And it needs something to feed on. And why not you? So when I was asked, I thought of this question. I said, uh, me and the Lord was talking. I said, Lord, what, what, what should I say? I'm going into a book called the Book of Romans. But I, I want to say something, and I need participation with this. Who is perfect in this room? If anybody's perfect, please stand up and help us to know what perfection is. So I'm only standing because I don't have a seat. But if I had a seat, I'd be sitting just like y'all because I'm not perfect either. Every day I try and strive for perfection. That's why I kept badgering. He said I was nagging him. But I was worried about his eternal destination. See, I knew when we was running around, we wasn't talking about Christ. We wasn't talking about heaven. We weren't talking about hell. We were just talking about where the next drug is coming from, when the next thing is going to happen, who's, uh, we used to have a motto, a little club name we called uh, HHDD. I ain't going to say what that meant, but that was our club name. And we would get together on Fridays, and, and the sad part, uh, again, you got to put this in your mind, if you don't know your opponent, you'll do the opposite of what you're supposed to do. You was married, but that substance caused him to go astray. It's a many people out here. It's many children, grown-ups like myself, 64, never had his dad in his life. Never in my life did I have my father. The streets was my father. I adapted to him at a young age, and I learned him well. But I didn't know that was my opponent. I didn't know till the Lord saved me what I was doing. I did not know, y'all. So I strived to do wrong. And most of us don't know. But we strive to do wrong. In the book of Romans, remember Genesis first. God said, let us make man in our own image. Right? And so as man grew, I learned that in the book of Psalms, that he, I found out that man was born a sinner. I'm like, what? Now, my mother and father was married. How was I born a sinner? Because of the fall of mankind, all of our DNA is to do wrong. I don't care who you are. All of our DNA is to do wrong. It may not seem wrong because you may not be an abuser of drugs. You may not be an abuser sexually. You may not be, but you might lie to get your way. You might steal if you have the opportunity. Amen? It's all kind of things, contrary to just some of the things I named, out of order that your opponent doesn't allow you to know. So, Today, when I go into this book, because I found out later on that I was born a sinner, and I found out that's the reason why I did so many of the things I was yielding to. The Bible says whoever you yield your members to, that's your body, it's your mind, that's who you become servant to. I don't care who you are. Lend your mind to a bunch of things contrary to the will of God, and you will become servant to it. I know because it happened to me. But I thank God for Jesus Christ. 
So we are born sinners. So my brother was born a sinner. That's why we need to learn how to forgive people. Because people don't know what makes a person do what they do. We don't even know what makes us do, really. We think we are doing the normal. This is not normal. We're in a time now called a pandemic. This ain't normal. We're in a state that people got to wear a mask everywhere they go. That ain't normal. It's not only affecting America, it's affecting the world. So you don't know there's a God. If it's a pandemic, if it's a germ where we can't see it that affects the whole world, you don't know there's a God. You better think there's a God. You better know that someone is allowing this. Medical doctors and stuff can't fix this. This only going to be fixed with prayer and fasting and asking God to forgive us for the junk we've done, the lies we've lived. We need to get back to a time of repenting and asking God to forgive us for the remission of our sins. We're sinners, I told y'all. The opponent made you a sinner. You're born in sin and shaped in iniquities. And if you find that word out, I ain't telling you, but I want you to look it up. And when you find out what an iniquity is, you might say, I got to change my life. Because I'm caught up in something and I, I'm tired of being in this. An iniquity will drive you crazy. An iniquity will have you doing things contrary to what you were meant to do. An iniquity will do things you will never ever. An iniquity will cause people to leave their families. An iniquity will cause people to become drunkards, drug addicts, liars, boastful, proud. That's what iniquities do. We think it's our money. Ain't nobody taking no money with them. We think it's our new houses and our cars. None of that goes nowhere. That's temporary things. The things we need are eternal. They're eternal. They're what we can't see. Remember I said your opponent. Your opponent is speaking right now. I'm talking, but the opponent is talking in here. See, I've come to learn where the heart is. That muscle in your chest, that ain't your heart. That's just a muscle. Your heart's in here. The Bible says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you think you one way, that's what you're going to do. That's where your heart lies. That's where your heart lies. If you're a liar, your heart lies in lying. Whatever you indulge in, the opponent, I'm telling you, the opponent is on post. So talking to my brother, a lot of times I worried about his eternal Salvation. See, I believe the Bible now. I'm just foolish enough. I was foolish enough to do all that stuff. I used to go down Gerard Avenue and get what they called spit back. And spit back was when a man would put methadone in his mouth and he would come back outside and spit it in a bottle. And I would buy it to get out. I had an opponent, y'all. I had an opponent. I was twisted. I was messed up. That's why I said I had to go into rehab. I had to sit down. I had to take inventory. I heard somebody say the other day, we was riding in the car, she said, I had to think and take time for myself. Those are great words, great words. You got to get to know yourself. You got to get to know yourself, y'all. We get caught up in the opponent. You know what the opponent does? He tugs us. He pulls us here, and he, he pulls us there, and he makes us keep thinking, I, 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 you know, that we got to do this, and we got to do that. The only thing you got to do is this. The day you come into the world, the day you come in, you headed to this. The day you enter into the world, your ticket is punched to go back out. I was sharing with them. I said, imagine this. If you go to the hospitals. And you go to the maternity ward, and you go there where all the babies are laying, and you go to the babies, and you step in the room, and you say, where y'all come from? Not one of them will tell you where they come from. Go to the graveyard, stand in the middle, shout as loud as you can, where are you? I bet you won't nobody answer you. The 
because we don't know when we come in. And by God's grace, he knew when he was going out. Everybody don't know that. My 23-year-old son did not know the day he was leaving because he was murdered. But God, in his infinite wisdom, set me free from the opponent. I learned how to fight the good fight of faith. The Bible told me the weapons of my warfare are not cardinal. That means they're not my left fist nor my right. They're not my feet nor my mouth. Because, see, we fight folks with our mouth. The Bible says evil communication or filthy language corrupts good manners. So when we cuss folks out and all that stuff, that's your opponent, y'all. It ain't really you. Your opponent beating up on you, making you do the opposite. The opponent was beating on my brother. It was challenging for me to see him struggle to be right. Some people want to be right and don't know how to do it because you've been beat on so much. And look, if you don't stay around the right people, you won't make it. You got to get around the people. You got to get around like-minded people. If you want to be different, you got to do different. If you want to talk different, you got to be around people that are talking different. I can't be around folks that's talking like I used to talk. I visit them, they my friend. But I don't hang in, I don't linger. Because I know the opponent there. And he might catch me off guard. You know in the ring, sometimes mm, the boxer get hit with a punch, he don't even see it coming. So if I hang around in a certain place for a long time, the opponent might sucker punch me. And before you know it, I'm back. And some folks, they don't even know they're being used by the devil. They don't know it. The, the, the scripture says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. It's not Gil that did what he did. It was the opponent that was working in him and through him. He did not mean to do what he did. I know he didn't. Because I ran with him. But if you hang around in certain places and environments long enough, it becomes you. It becomes you. That's not how we were raised. We just take on characteristics. So in Romans chapter 7, this really helped me to understand what my brother was going through. What he was going through. Chapter 7, verse 13 says, Was then that which is good made deaf unto me? God forbid. Things that were good, water ice. Think I'm the ice cream man. Simple things. Girls, jacks. Well, some of y'all may not. Y'all, I'm a little older. Rope. We are marbles, tops. Simple things in life later on, became bad. The simple things were still there. We just didn't do them. He said, God forbid, but sin, that's what it is, y'all. Our opponent is connected to sin. That it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. See, I thought it was cool to be named R&R. &R. I thought that was man. Rodden Rick, that's me, baby, you know. I was wearing a badge of honor being rotten. What kind of madness is that? That's sheer madness. But my opponent didn't think so. So he kept me off guard and wouldn't let me get my bearings and, and, and see that what I was doing wasn't because sin had overtaken me, sin had overtaken Gil, and sin had overtaken June at one time, and Donnie, and Clyde, and Vince. I'm naming some brothers that we used to run together. Some of our friends been gone. Bronco Billy, Nikolai, he was a drinker. He, that was his shot, Nikolai Vodka. So we called him Nikolai. 
He wasn't no Russian. But that's the title because that was his shot. And so we had a little gang, a little, not a gang street gang, but just a fruit group that we got together to get foolish. And as time went on, if we tell the truth, all of us went down a road we didn't mean to go down because we got involved in some things in our opponent. See, we didn't know the opponent was the champ. Sin is the heavyweight champ, middleweight champ, lightweight champ, featherweight champ, welterweight champ of the world. Sin. And the only thing can beat sin is your connection to God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ beat it on the cross. He beat it on the cross. So I had to find someone who can train me for my opponent. <laughs> so I found Jesus. And I got in the ring. And I've been boxing there ever since. I've been fighting the good fight of faith. And that's why I came back. As soon as I got this stuff, I ran back to my friends. I said, I'm saved, y'all. They started coming. But I watched them drift, just like me. I shared with my boy Clyde one time. I said, Clyde, I can't drink with you and Gil no more. Now, I, I've been going to church and everything, but I, I figured a few drinks wasn't going to hurt me. But they was taking me back slowly to where I used to be. I didn't know the opponent had slipped in a couple of jabs. I didn't know I was getting weak at the knees, as the song said. I didn't know that. So one day, as I came from the bar with them, my wife was sitting on the porch, and she said, how are you going to get them to do different if you're doing the same thing? And when she said that, a light came on. The bell came, bing, round was over. Got back in my corner, trainer said, look, I know he hit you with a few right then, and you looked like you was getting weak, but I want you to get back, and I want you to stand. I want you to put on the whole armor of God. He said, I want you to put on the helmet of salvation. He said, I want you to put on the breastplate of righteousness. He said, I want you to gird your loin up with the truth. He said, I want you to shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He said, I need you to take up the shield of faith and the sword, which is the word of God. He said, then when you step back out there in the ring, you're going to win. I've been winning every since, gang. I'm telling you sometimes that he come. When I would go see my brother, we would sit over there and talk. I would get on him. You need to move them legs. The therapist said, move them legs. Move them legs. Man, you stop nagging me. Move them legs, man. I don't care what you say. Move them legs. Because I was worried about his eternal salvation. And after a while, after a while, as he got weak because the opponent was beating on him, after a while, he calmed down. And he began to pray. I said, man, no matter what's going on around you, find your peace. Find your peace. Make amends to God. And if by chance you can make amends to those you hurt, make amends. But if not, I ask you to send Judah. The word Judah means praise. So send Judah to those hearts that you can't fix. See, only God can take a stony heart out and put it in a heart of flesh. Some of us hearts are stony. We don't even understand the warfare we're in. But I'm going to try to share a little bit with you right here. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. I'm fleshly. Sold under sin. Ain't that something? Sin then bought me. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. That was me. That was my man. That was other people I know that's still in the street. I got homies still out there. They hate how they are, but they struggle to get free from it. It's a struggle. It's a spiritual warfare. We have an opponent. We're in a spiritual realm. We can see the walls. We can see the windows. We can see Gil and everyone around. But you can't see what's not to be seen. But you can act on it. It can make you act. He said when he was a would do right, he would do wrong. For we know that the law is spiritual. All right? 
He said, if then I do which I would not, I can send unto the law that it is good. Now there is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Only the Lord can get that out of us. You can't get it out on your own. I tried before I went to rehab. I ain't going out used today. Not going out. Not today. Not today. Sit in the house, moping and groping, moving about, uneasy, unedged, until I went out. And once I went out, it was all over. Now there is no more eyes that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, that is in your flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. I mean, you know, to, to do right is present. But how to perform that, which is good, I find not. You got to tell the truth to yourself. I don't want, I'm not the examiner. I'm not the last one you're going to meet. There's someone we all going to meet when it's over. Believe me. In this earth, you see all the things that are going on. Trees all around. Not one of us planted them. Amen? You got birds that chirp in the morning. Not one of us feed them. They come, they, they've been here before you got here. All of us have had grandparents. None of y'all was test tube babies. All of you came through a, a woman's womb through a man. They had parents. This thing has been going on and going on and going on and going on. And men have been fighting to do right for centuries. For centuries. For I know this in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. To depress me, but how to perform that which is not I good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Woo! And we not might. See, sometimes the devil is so cunning, he'll make you think you're doing all right. When it's evil in the presence of God. You got to know who God is. You got to get to know what his likes and his dislikes is. I didn't know that. I didn't get to know that until I got clean with the recovery to understand what God likes and does not like. And the Bible says it's appointed once unto a man or a woman to die and then the judgment. Then God said you're going to answer for every deed we've done in this flesh. Whether it be good or bad, there's an answer. There is a time that the opponent is done. And now the creator of all things, we got an answer to. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law. And that's where I'm at with my brother. That's where I'm at with myself. And that's where you should be at. He said, but I see another law in my members, in my body, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me unto captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. That's what my brother struggled with. Trying to get that opponent off his back. Like I said, in order for you to do different, you got to place yourself around different people. Remember when I started, I said, I'm going to be speaking, but some are going to be speaking to you too. Some people have heard what I've said and some have not. Some have heard what's going on in here. Some have heard their opponent. Because he didn't want you to hear what I got to say. Because what I got to say may change your life. And he don't never want you to change. He's the accuser of the brethren. Well, I remember from the beginning, I said we were created in the image of God. Everyone in this room, I don't care what your age is, you were created in the image of God. You have to make the choice. And I knew my brother had good intents, but because we did not know our opponent, we did not know who we were fighting against, sometimes he lost a battle. 
He didn't lose his battle with life itself. Sometimes he lost his battle in what he wanted to really do as opposed to what he did. And if we be truthful, if we tell the truth to ourselves, you ain't got to confess it to me. See, this is not Catholic. To the Catholic, you got to go in the booth and confess it to the priest? No. In this realm, you just tell God. He said, if you believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you got to believe things. Lord, I need help. And see, going over and seeing him and watching him and talking with him, I understood it, that he was struggling with his opponent. And he didn't know how to fight him because you can't fight your opponent with words. You only can fight him in the spirit. You need the Holy Spirit of God to realm, reign in your mortal flesh so that he can help you to defeat your opponent. Amen? All of us in here have an opponent. Keep living. You'll see. Keep living. Right now, you're hearing something in your mind. You're hearing something. You can tell with yourself right now if what you're hearing has anything to do with what I've said. Or is it something nagging at you, something pulling at you to do the opposite of what you've heard? Somebody can pull you. Somebody can say, look, how long? How long dude going to be talking? Ain't he finished? I'm telling you. As I used to be, when, the, when younger, when the boys passed on, because we had a homie, Bronco Billy, died back in the day, we couldn't wait to get out. Because we knew it was a grub somewhere and plenty of liquor. Plenty of liquor. We was going to eat them and drink them dry. But today I don't celebrate like that. I celebrate different today. And all of us have to learn, listen, he's not the only one. It's a lot of people that struggle. He wanted to be a better dad. I know he did. He wanted to be a better grandparent. I know he did. But his opponent. Kept hitting him, jabbing at him, and he didn't know how to fight back. When I was around, he knew what to do. But sometimes, you know, we need somebody to walk with us in this thing. That's why in the Bible they walk by twos, so the other one can help the other one. We got to learn how to help each other. We got to learn how to forgive. My brother said it, that's right, church. Listen, the buildings that we go in and fellowship, that ain't the church. The word of God said the church is a body of baptized believers. That's the church. If you want to be the church, just join. It don't take nothing to join. You say, Lord, here I am. I surrender. Now teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk. Show me what's different that I need to do. See, because all of us are going to cross a threshold one day called destiny. Are you preparing for that threshold? Are you making yourself ready? Are you getting ready because you don't know the hour, the moment, the second when the Lord will say it's time to go? I tell you, my son, I saw him that morning. At, he was 23, and I didn't see him again in life. He never made it back home. I didn't know that was his last day on the earth. Nobody don't know when their last day is. But the opponent will lie and tell us we got all the time in the world to do what we want, how we want, no matter how it affects other people. That's the opponent we have. Everybody has an opponent. But I thank God. As he got weaker, the opponent couldn't take advantage of him. I was grateful for that because that's when I could step in and he could hear me more clearer. See, the opponent didn't want him to hear what I had to say. See, it got to a place where he couldn't smoke no more blunts. He couldn't smoke them no more. I was grateful. I'm telling you the truth. I get on him when I come. Joe will tell you. What you doing, man? You, you rolling up blunts, nigga? We rolled up with top paper. You using tobacco? You don't even smoke cigarettes. That's a cigar. Come on. I got to tell the truth. 
We don't even understand that. We putting tobacco, weed and tobacco, and smoking it, killing ourselves. Because your opponent, I smoke more weed than any of y'all could ever smoke in your life. I spent a year in Japan. I smoked the best weed they had in the world. There's some of the best drugs they had in it, which I thought was the best. I'm sorry. I've been there. I've done it. But that was the lie from the opponent. He told me, Rick, you can do this. You can do that. Gave me high blood pressure at the end. I had hep C. I'm cured of that. Thank you, Jesus. I got a leg that don't bend for being hard-headed. I had cancer. My God brought me through. Just had two aneurysm surgeries in October. God brought me through. The opponent was trying to kill me when I was running the streets. But God had a plan because he knew on July the 2nd, I had something to do. You got something to do. I have an assignment for you. I got to clean you up. I got to take you to a place that I need you to tell some people that I'm real. I need you to express to some people how your brother struggled with sin because he didn't know his opponent. So I'm fighting for my brothers. I'm fighting for Clyde. I'm fighting for Vince. I'm fighting for Dante. I'm fighting for June. I'm fighting for Gerald. I'm fighting for Danielle. I'm fighting for my wife. I'm fighting for my children. I'm fighting for everybody that I know. Because I know their opponent. They don't know him. I know him. I come to know him. And I'm fighting, Chink. I'm fighting, Chris Shaw. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. That y'all eternal destiny be with Jesus Christ. And not separated from him. That's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for y'all lives. Everybody in this room, this is a word of God. This ain't my word. Understand that you're sin. It is sin that's trying to destroy you. And it may not come through the substances. It may come through jealousy. I'm just jealous. Spirit. It may come through hatred. I just can't stand them. It may come through gossip. Every time you see them, I got to talk about the other person. It may come through just not forgiving. See, God said if you don't forgive people, I shared this with him. I said, don't leave this earth with unforgiveness. Because you can go to church or whatever, whatever your faith is, you can walk in it but have unforgiveness. What you make think God going to forgive you? You harbor unforgiveness on the earth, and you stand before God. He said, I won't forgive you. Because he's forgiven us. Every day he wakes us up is new mercy. We use yesterday. And we don't even know what's coming tomorrow. For tomorrow, we have worries of itself. We just need to get to know Jesus and the pardon of our sins. He came to die to set us free. Because he knew the opponent. See, the opponent thought he had the victory in Jesus. They say he marched him down to old Golgotha Hill. He said they stretched him out and they hung him high on an old rugged cross. And they say he gave up the ghost. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. I'm just believing it. I'm just, I'm just so foolish enough, I just believe the word of God. But they said on early, early, on the third day, they say he rose up. And he said he rose with all power. All power. And the, the, the blessed assurance in him is that he died for you and me. See, remember from the beginning I said sin is our nature. He came to, the die, to die and destroy sin. He said, oh death, where is thy victory? Oh grave, where is thy sting? He took the keys to heaven, hell and the grave. So we don't have to make our resident there. But you got to get to know Jesus. I'm telling you, 
The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. You got to know the Lord, y'all. He loves us. You wouldn't have been dispatched into the earth. If you read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11, he said, Before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. Who else could know you but God before you was in your mother's womb? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm foolish enough to believe the word of God. And money don't make a difference in God's sight. Poverty don't make a difference in God's sight. We all created in the image and likeness of God. We just got to get to know him. I got to know him. I'm praying for all y'all. I really am. I'm praying, God, you saved a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I see. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. He could have left me out there. He could have left me out there. But God said, I would choose that no man would perish, but yet all would come to repentance. As I come to a conclusion with this, I want to read something that I saw. I already told you about your opponent. I told you the truth. That right now you're hearing something besides me. That's your opponent. He doesn't want you to hear clear. You could be in a room and preaching and teaching and singing could be going on and the opponent can still talk. That's just how he is. It says each one here today has a choice to make concerning eternity. We can, cho we can choose to believe in Christ following him as Lord, and, or we can live for ourselves with no hope for the future. If we choose Jesus Christ, then there needs to be a change that includes confession of sin and belief in the gospel of Christ. This gospel tells us that Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead to show us the way to heaven. If you want more information regarding this way of life, then see me after the service. The second choice is to go your own way and live as this life was the only place that matters. Once this choice is made, you will have to live with the decision for eternity. Remember that being rich doesn't mean you cannot go to heaven. There's some rich people who know Christ. But if we trust in our riches or anything else more than Christ, we may find ourselves in a place of torment for eternity. Friends, in whose honor we gather this day, I hope you all have made a right choice in the decision to know Jesus Christ. This is my prayer. Let us bow our heads. And I hope this prayer, when I say it, will reflect something in you. Lord in heaven, it is through your mercy that you sent your only begotten son to earth. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And I've always been a faithful disciple of your word. And I have committed sinful actions to other people, even to people that I love. Give me the patience and strength to overcome the temptations of evil. Help me to honor the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. So that like him, I too can be reborn. Father, I thank you for another opportunity. I spoke many times to my brother, my friend. I loved him dearly, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for the journey. See, life is a journey, and I've come to understand that now. And on this journey, you took a brother that lived at fourth, the fourth street, the fourth side. He was on the other side of town. And you took me from 29th and Columbia Avenue. They call it Cecil B, but our old school is still Columbia Avenue to me. 
and you intertwined our lives. You were doing it all for your glory. Even in our mayhem and miss-ups and mistakes, you said all things work together for the good. We just didn't know that the goodness was in us. But I thank you, Heavenly Father, for an opportunity to stand here. I thank you for meeting Gilbert J. Lockhart some years ago. But most of all, I thank you for saving me that I could go back and tell friends there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Thank you for saving me, Lord, for such a time as this. If we look back over our lives, who would have thought this is where we would be at today because a lot of times Lord we really don't think about death it comes unexpected but it comes so help us from this day forward Father to remember that we're going to cross this road of life too and I pray Father that everyone under the sound of my voice that the seed of your word will marinate in their heart Lord, you caused it to grow and produce fruit. Fruit that would last. I pray for those, Father, that need to repent and come to know Jesus Christ and the pardoning of their sins before it's too late. Before they have to spend eternity separated from you. See, I just believe there's a life after death. I was foolish enough when I was younger to believe they was partying in hell. Until I read this story about the weeping and the gnashing of teeth and the flesh burning. See, God, you told me in your word that I take off this mortality. Gil took off the mortality. That's just the shell there. And he put on in mortality. But I thank you, Lord, before he left, he made a way for his mortal soul to stay in your presence. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for salvation coming. I don't care if it came on his bed of affliction. He still was saved. I don't care, God, what the devil said. My brother was saved. He called on the name of the Lord. And your word said, if I call upon the name of the Lord, I shall be saved. So he was saved. Yeah, he made some mistakes. So did I. If we truthfully look back over our lives, we've made the mistakes ourselves. So Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to speak about my brother and myself. I'm just a mirror image. I'm hoping that somebody's looking in the mirror and can see something about themselves that they need to bring to you, Lord. Father God, bless these people. These your people. Save those, Father God, that you call them to save. And then use them for your glory. Father God, the words that have come out of my mouth and the meditation that's in every heart right now, even while the opponent is speaking, there's still a meditation in their heart. Because their heart is not in their chest. It's in their spirit. Their eternal soul. Their spirit. That's the heart of a man. Or a woman. So Lord God, you speak to them. I might not be able to reach it with the words I've said. So I pray you would reach it, Lord. Reach it, Lord, in the wee ear night, even when they're restless, tossing to and fro in their beds, reach them, Father. Let them know how much you love them and you care for their eternal destiny. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you for Rick. Thank you, Lord God, for the wonderful job of making up the body. But we thank you, Jesus, for taking the soul. Thank you that he found a place, a 
mansion in the sky. God is not like man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he should repent. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. And he believed. He believed. Will you believe? Will you believe? Will you believe that death, this ain't the first home going you've been in. Death is always going to be coming. And one day somebody may be looking down at you. But I pray that you be able to be up and not down, trying to get up. Heavenly Father, have your way. Beautiful. And we're just the clay. So Lord God, just clay vessels. Put them on the wheel of life again. Lord, somebody might have a scar in their vessel. Somebody have a piece broken off. Hurt might have broken or wounded somebody. Dismay. Confusion. Doubt. Envy. Strife. Malice. Somewhere in this earthly vessel, there's a crack or a mar or a scar. Lord, put us back on the wheel of life again, please. And Lord, mold us and shape us. And if David, if I can use this word, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. Father, I ask you to do this in Jesus' name. Remind them later on, Lord, about the opponent that they did see. The one who's already setting a plan for later on. He's a deceiver. The Bible says he's the father of lies. Have your way, Lord. Undertaking and becoming to take over the direction of the service. Amen. Come on, let the people say amen. Come on, please say amen. God is real. God is real. He's worthy to be praised. I tell you, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Everyone, please stay seated. And I, like I said, I have family and friends that's outside that want to come and do a final viewing. After they finish viewing, I'm going to ask that this room, this room, no one get up just yet until um, Deke will come around and escort you, around, you guys around. Y'all going to remain seated until after. I'm not going to say y'all got to leave because we got another little presentation we want to get. So if y'all just, this room, when y'all finish viewing, can you stay?